Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Um, a few weeks ago, we published a, um, a video detailing the checks you need to make if buying a, a used Leica M6. We've had a couple of people contact us and ask us if we could go into to more, deal, uh, more detail regarding the, the rangefinder. In our first video, it was a generic video. We didn't have time to go in, into, 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 into too much detail. And people have asked more information, so I thought it'd be good if, if I produced two more videos. One, an in-detail look at the rangefinder and checking the rangefinder, and another in-detail look at the shutter. Um, shutter and range, or, or, shutter and rangefinder, obviously the most, the two most important, important features on the camera. And I have to say, if an M6 is gonna fail, it's gonna be the shutter or it's gonna be the rangefinder. So here we go. Um, Leica M6 uh, with a 90mm Simulacron mounted. Um, when you're looking at the rangefinder, the first thing I would check when you're when you're checking checking it out to buy is for is for mechanical damage. Now, have a careful look around the top. Have a look around the top corners here. Have a look around the um, the corner here. Have a have a, have a close look at the wind on crank. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, these these are quite these are quite vulnerable, and if if a camera had a knock on the corner, these will often be distorted. So have quite a careful look at that. Um, if that if the top plate's okay, you can, you can be fairly sure it hasn't had a ma a major knock. Although the, the the checks I'm about to detail will will just will just act as a double check. Next thing I would do would be to take the lens off and just. With this little lever here, which is the lever that um, operates the focus, so the rangefinder mechanism within the viewfinder, and also the parallax correction within the viewfinder, which is the thing that moves the frame across the viewfinder as you get closer. Just have a, a careful look at that. It should spring backwards and forwards in a very healthy way. One of the biggest issues you'll come across with, with this, with the M6 generally, is that becomes very, very sleepy. So if you look through the viewfinder, you can see the, um, you can see the, the, the bright line frames in the viewfinder, and you can see the little, the little um, square, the rangefinder square in the middle. As you, as you move this wheel, you'll see the, range, you'll see the rangefinder images coincide, and you'll see the whole frame shift across the, um, shift across the viewfinder. If you just release it gently, like that, you'll see it flick back quickly. That's what you want to see. What you don't want to see is, is the thing sleepily moving, sort of moving backwards and forwards in a lazy way, because that would suggest that the, the rangefinder mechanism needs, um, needs um, uh, lubricating, stripping down, generally servicing. At this point, the other thing that I would look at uh, in relation to the mechanics now uh, is is the is the viewfinder selector here as you as you move that frame across it brings in one of the three pairs of bright line frames so with the standard m6 you have the the 28 the 35 the 50 the 75 the 90 the 135 they're brought in in pairs as you attach the lens and the the preview lever here can be just used to preview preview the, the field of view so if you're not sure if you want to put on a 50 mil or 35 mil lens you can just use this to see what the 35 or 50 mil field of view is um, again they do become very sleepy if the camera hasn't been used properly. They should just they should just click into place. If you see one 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 appearing and one disappearing slowly, that's a sign that the rangefinder does need does need servicing. So you've looked at the um, the parallax and you've looked at the rangefinder mechanism. You look you've looked at the frame selector. The other thing I would do now is just attach a lens. And just check, just check out the rangefinder accuracy. Now, if the camera has been knocked, this can be an issue. Hopefully, if you can see no physical damage on the top, it should be aligned still. But they do occasionally come out of alignment, though it is quite rare. So put the, put the lens on the camera, look through the camera, and point the camera towards a door frame or the, the top of a picture frame, or if you're outside, 
point it towards uh, the, the roof line on a building. What you're looking for is a sharp, a sharp defined edge. Focus the camera towards infinity. And what you should see are the two, the two images of the, um, the two image, images of the rangefinder coming together. And if you're looking at a horizontal line, you'd expect to see both images aligning horizontally, like that. So if you're looking at a door frame, for example, you, you'd expect to see the door frame come across like that. If the image is doing that, if one of the door, one of, one of the images of the door frame is above the other image of the door frame, or like that, then the uh, the horizontal uh, sorry, sorry the vertical alignment of the uh, of the rangefinder is out, and that needs to be adjusted. So that's the first check. The second check is to go outside and find something at infinity, and it doesn't need to be at infinity. It needs to be a long, long way away. Um, a radio mast, or maybe a, a, a church, a church tower in the distance. Uh, that's perfect. Don't try to do it at something that's 50 or 100 meters away because that might, might, might not quite be far enough to actually get to infinity. Line it up in the viewfinder and just move, move from, from near focus to infinity. Now here you're checking the horizontal alignment. You'll have two images, say it's of a, of a radio tower, two images like this and they'll, they'll do this. And as they coincide, it'll be, it'll be in focus. Uh, what you wanna make sure happens they, they do coincide as you get towards infinity so as you get towards infinity those two items should coincide exactly shouldn't go over shouldn't go under if they do go too far or not far enough again it's a sign the the rangefinder needs adjusting that's not an issue in itself it is just a, a service but uh, yeah it's a service on these cameras can be quite expensive so if you're negotiating to buy that's just something to keep an eye on so you've checked out the mechanical aspects of the range of the uh, of the range finder. What I would do now is to look at the, the optics of the rangefinder. Take the lens off. And what you want to do with a bright light, and as, as I always say in my videos, a, a mobile phone torch is brilliant for this, and shine a bright light into the viewfinder, which is that window, and into the rangefinder, which is that window. Now, what you're looking for is, is misting, or fungus, or coating and balsam faults. Now, misting is quite, it's, it's quite self-explanatory. You often get very, very light dust on the inside, just on the inside of the, of the viewfinder window. That's not so much of an issue, but what you're looking for is, is heavy mist, misting inside. So if you shine the light through it, you'll see the light focusing on the, on, on the mist, a bit like car headlights in, in fog. Um, if it's really heavy, that can be an issue. Um, also look through the rangefinder window. Again, if you can see any misting, and it, that can be an issue and it should be looked at. The other thing to check out for is fungus. Now, if these cameras have been stored for a long time and they've been stored for a long time in slightly damp or dark areas, you can get fungus growing on the, on the coatings. Um, what fungus looks like is a spidery type effect or spots with spiders' legs coming out of them. So look very, very closely into, into the viewfinder and into the rangefinder to make sure you can see no nasty sort of growth in, on the coatings inside. You will need to you will need to look very carefully because if a viewfinder has an issue with focus with, with fungus rather, it'll always get worse and it can affect other equipment and it's a nightmare to get sorted out. So just shine the light in and look very carefully for that. And also of course go from this side too just to make sure you can see you can see nothing on the viewfinder side. You do sometimes see a couple of little dot of little spots behind the eyepiece. I wouldn't worry too much about that because that is just literally dust behind the eyepiece. That can be unscrewed and cleaned quite easily. But again, make sure it isn't fungus. Make sure it doesn't have those sort of spidery legs coming out of it. And the third thing that I mentioned is, is coating of balsam faults. This is much more of an issue with the older M2, M3, M4 cameras. But again, look into it, and particularly with the, um, the rangefinder from the front and the, and the uh, viewfinder from the front, what you'll see is, 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 is a brown stain arcing across the glass, or maybe a rainbowy type effect across the glass, a bit like looking at oil on water. So look very carefully into the camera, and if you can see any, any funny stains across, the, now the, the brown stain it can be difficult to spot, but once you see it, it really is quite obvious. You'll have a darker portion here than the sort of lighter, clearer portion above it. Um, same with, with, the, uh, with the rainbowy effect. Once you, once you see it, it'll be quite obvious. So do just spend some time looking, looking very, very carefully into the, um, into the glass on these things. 
So you've checked over the mechanics, you've looked at the frame selector, you've looked at the range, the range finder mechanism itself. You've checked over the, the optics, you, you, you've made sure the glass is nice and clean. Um, you've checked over the focusing mechanism to make sure everything is aligning as it should. If you've got a clear bill of health in those areas, you can be, you can be very sure you've got a good range finder. Now, these checks apply equally to the older cameras and the newer cameras. So if you're looking at an M2 or an M3, again, similar checks. If you're looking at, uh, if you're looking at an M10, similar checks. Uh, they're, they're all mechanical, they're all built in a very, very similar way. So the, the checks I've just been through will, 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 will apply just as much for a camera built in 1954 as it will for a camera built last year. Um, I hope you found that useful. If you have any comments, please stick them in the box below. If you've liked the video, please click the like button. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.